Hey Sands fans, welcome to another of my videos. And in this video, well, we're going to talk about the Ottawa Senators and the first half of the 2022-23 season. Uh, so, unfortunately, it looks like it's another disappointing season. Uh, I went into the season with really high hopes. We brought in Debrincat, we brought in uh, Claude Giroux, and of course the, there's the emergence of younger players like Stussel and Kachuk who are just going to get better. And I thought this, is a, this was a team that would really contend for a playoff spot. But unfortunately, uh, it just doesn't really look like that's going to happen. We have to be realistic here. The Senators are currently 14th in the Eastern Conference. And let's just break down how the season has actually gone. So currently, we're 19, 20, and 3. We have 41 points in 42 games. So it's just a shade under 500. And that's just not good enough to get into the playoffs. Uh, but where the Senators really went off the rails was at the beginning of the season. So... For the first six games of the season, the Senators had a 4-2 record. Hey, that's pretty good, right? 4-2, not bad. Then the Senators went on a seven-game losing streak. And that just completely killed this season. And whatever chance we had of getting to the playoffs, I'm sorry, but you go on a seven-game losing streak, uh, one of those losses was in overtime, so the Senators get, did get one point. But you were talking one point out of a potential 14 points. And that's just not good enough. And that just derailed everything. So if you break down the first 21 games, well, thanks to that seven-game losing streak, this team was 8-13 and and was one of the worst teams in the league. Maybe not as bad as Vancouver, but still one of the worst. And the last 21 games, well, we've sort of figured things out a bit. We are 11-10, and 10, so we're now playing at a 500 level. You know, if, uh, if we hadn't gone on that seven-game losing streak and we had won, let's say, three of those games... We'd be a 500 team, and we'd actually still be in the playoff contention. We'd probably be 9th or 10th, but we wouldn't be that far back. Uh, right now, mathematically, it looks like the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to get to the 8th uh, final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference, and they're going to do so with a 94-point season. So, if you break it down, if the Penguins make the playoffs with 94 points, we currently have 41 points. So, we need 53 points over the next 40 games to make the playoffs. 53 points. So that's about 26 wins and one overtime loss in 40 games. It's not totally impossible. I know the Senators do have a tendency to play a little bit better as the season wears on. And yeah, they might get 20 wins. If we're really lucky, they might get 25 wins. But it's, it's hard for me to believe that a team that currently has 41 points in 42 games is somehow going to turn it up and end up with... 53 points in their last 40 games but I guess you know weirder things have happened I still remember that one season where Andrew Hammond brought this team into the playoffs nobody saw that coming and by the way Andrew Hammond just recently retired so I mean hopefully he's happy with his retirement there uh, but anyways that's where we stand unlikely we're going to make the playoffs which is just really too bad and you know I think what also sucks is that yeah we're not going to make the playoffs but we're not playing poorly enough to get a high draft pick. So it doesn't look like we're going to be the Connor Bedard lottery or anything. And, and it's a very good draft. A lot of good players. Obviously Bedard at the top. But there's some other really good players as well. And it looks like the Senators are going to end up with like maybe a 10th maybe a overall pick. Uh, depending on how the lottery works. So not good enough to make the playoffs. But not bad enough to get a decent draft pick either. So, kind of a lost season. But well, let's talk about how some of these individual players are going. So, we're going to make our mid-season report card going. Uh, I don't want this video to last too long, so I'm going to go pretty quickly through all of them. Uh, Brady Kachuk, Tim Stusla, and Claude Giroux. And honestly, this line, you know, it all gets an A+. Kachuk is just a superstar as far as I'm concerned. I mean, he heart and soul player, plays physical, scores goals, does everything, leads his team in scoring. Uh, best player one of the best players to be honest that I think the Senators have ever had uh, so of course he gets an A plus Tim Stutzla he's a point a game player he's breaking out he is just turning to the superstar player uh you know ironically with Stutzla drafted third overall in 2020 he was taken after Alexis Lafreniere and Quinton Byfield and Stutzla's outplaying both of them by a mile um I mean they are still of course young but you know I've actually heard rumors that the New York Rangers are now open to trading Lafreniere because he's been a huge disappointment for them. They expected way more from him. And, and I kind of think, you know, if the Senators had the first overall pick and drafted Alexis Lafreniere, and Lafreniere's playing the way he's 
be playing for the Rangers, we would already be, be saying he's another Alexandre. So, again, these guys still have lots of time to turn it around, but the fact that Stutza has so outplayed the two players taken before him, he is looking like just a, a superstar talent. I'm so glad that he's going to be here for, you know, the next seven or eight years, hopefully anyways. And Claude Giroux, you know, he's 34 years old, uh, but he's putting up like a 70-point season. I think he's on pace for about 70 points. I did not see that coming. I thought at 34, you know, his pace is going to slow down. He'd probably be maybe get 55 points he's played really well and and you know he is kind of like he's not the captain but he's kind of like almost an unofficial captain because i gotta believe that most of the players in this dressing room look up to Claude Giroux probably even more so than Brady Kachuk and of course that's just experience Giroux has been around for a long time he was a captain of the Flyers for 10 years so he knows what it's like to be a leader and you gotta believe that a guy like Kachuk probably looks up to Giroux as, as you know a mentor type and I think it's great I think it's, it's a great signing he's playing so well and uh, yeah so this whole line gets an A plus from us uh, this brings us to Debrencat who was our big uh, acquisition in the summer you know, I went into this season thinking DeBrenkat could potentially get 40 goals. He had been a big goal scorer in Chicago, but he's really now more on pace for 25 goals. It's not a bad season, but I think we probably expected a little bit more. I think one of the issues with DeBrenkat is when he was playing with Chicago, he often played with Patrick Kane. And one of the criticisms was maybe Patrick Kane was making DeBrenkat look better than he actually was. And maybe there is something to that, because he was scoring at a rate of 40 goals a season with Chicago. Now he's going down to around 25 goals, but he doesn't have Patrick Kane to play with, so that's probably the excuse. Uh, but he is still playing pretty well. So, you know, for DeBrencat, you know, he gets an A- minus as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Josh Norris, I, you can't rate the guy because he's been injured pretty much all season. But he went into the season as our number one center. That has now dropped. Nothing against Norris, but Stutzla has just now proven he's just the better player. And that's just how it's going to be from now on. Uh, but I can't rate him anyways because he hasn't really done anything. Uh, Drake Batherson, I give him an A-. minus. See, the big problem with Batherson is offensively he's doing pretty well. I think he's averaging close to a point a game. 37 points in 41 games, I think, last time I checked. Um, but Batherson has a minus 29. Minus 29, that is the worst plus minus in the entire NHL. And that's not something I think Batherson wants to be proud of. So that just tells me maybe he's floating a little bit too much and he really has to get his defensive game up there. Um, but offensively, he's still doing okay. And then you got the other players who are really just pluggers at this point. you know. So I give guys like Kaslek, Parker, Kelly, uh, Austin Watson. These guys all get a C grade for me. They're just doing kind of what you expect, but they're not really impact players, but you know, they're hitting and fighting and delivering, you know, whatever we're expecting them from a third or fourth line player. They're, they have their grit, so they're decent enough in the lineup. Shane Pinto, for a rookie, has played pretty well. Um, had a good start to the season, but it's kind of trailed off a little bit, but again, he's a young player. He's a rookie. He's going to struggle with his consistency. So I give him a B grade, and he's going to turn out to be better. And Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if one day Shane Pinto turned out to be almost as good as Josh Norris. There could be a time where we're really debating who's our number two center. Is it going to be Norris or Pinto? And I kind of say, well, who is a better player in your opinion, Kyle Torres or Mike Fisher? So you can kind of go either way. Some people might say Torres, others would say Fisher. And I think Norris and Pinto are going to be kind of in, the, in that same level. Uh, Broussard, I'll give him a C plus. I think, you know, skill-wise... He came in on a minimum wage contract. He was just a tryout player, 35 years old. Uh, but he made the team out of cap, and he's been a pretty nice addition uh, as a veteran leader, so sure. Um, but I think towards the trade deadline, uh, Broussard is a player the Senators should probably get rid of. I think there's teams that are going to the playoffs. They might be interested in having Broussard as a depth player, and Broussard maybe could get us a seventh-round pick. And the other thing, too, is that the Senators should also give some of their younger players in the, a the AHL a chance. So we have some good prospects, like Ridley Gregg, Igor Sokolov. Uh, so I think at some point the Senators should probably just trade Broussard and bring up a guy like Ridley Gregg or Igor Sokolov and, and give them a chance to play in the NHL, because they are the future. And uh, Matt Joseph, uh, another C player, really hasn't done very much. But, interesting thing with Joseph and also Tyler Mott, who is not on this list, 
Um, Tyler Mott and Matt Joseph, the only players so far that have a plus rating. So both Mott and Joseph are plus three. And they're the only Senators with a plus rating. Unless you count Jake Bernard Docker, who has a plus one. But Bernard Docker isn't really a regular NHLer, so I didn't include him there. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this brings us to the defense. Okay, so Shabbat, he gets an A because he's Thomas Shabbat. He's kind of doing whatever you kind of expect, taking a lot of minutes and really just leading the defense as you'd expect. Uh, Zub, I'm going to give a B to. Again, he's, he's a very reliable defenseman um, and a good partner for Shabbat. Uh, Jake Sanderson, uh, so far I'm going to give him an A-. minus. So Sanderson, I think, actually has been our best rookie. I know some people might think it's Shane Pinto. I give the nod to Sanderson. And right now, I would say Sanderson has actually passed Zub as this team's second best defenseman. And down the line, I'm going to make this prediction with Sanderson. Two or three years from now, he's going to pass Thomas Shabbat. And he's going to be our best defenseman. So that's my prediction right now. And we'll check in two years if I'm right. But Sanderson, very good rookie season from him. Hamannick, I give him a C grade. Again, he's playing okay, but nothing too special. Uh, Holden's another C player. Zaitsev, well, what can I say about Zaitsev? I'll give him a D minus. Uh, so Zaitsev is the one player that, if the centers are going to make any changes, number one change you got to make is you got to get rid of Zaitsev and you got to bring in Lassie Thompson. I know the Senators have been mentioning that they want a right shot defenseman, and there's been rumors about Eric Carlson, Seth Jones. Matt Dumba is a new rumor. I don't know if the Senators are going to pull the trigger and bring any of those guys in. They do carry big cap hits, although any of them would look pretty good. I mean, Carlson, I mean, he's back to his old trick. He's one of the NHL scoring leaders this season. Um, I mean, we know Seth Jones is a good defenseman. Matt Dumba is a good defenseman as well. He'd look pretty good, but they do carry pretty big cap hits. So I don't know if it really makes sense to bring them in. But certainly, I don't really understand why Zaitsev is in the lineup. Because he doesn't really bring very much to this team. And, I, you know, you have a good prospect, Lassie Thompson. First round pick. He's played well in the AHL. He played well in Finland. I think it's just time to get rid of Zaitsev and just give a spot over to Thompson. And I don't really understand why the Senators don't do that. Other than, I think they just don't want to put Zaitsev in the AHL and pay him $4.5 million to play in the AHL. But it's not because he's better or deserves to be here more than Thompson. I mean, the Senators... This is the number one thing I would do. Is I'd say bye-bye Zaitsev and bring in Lassie Thompson and bring Lassie Thompson in as a full-time NHLer. I think it's, it's just time for him to get his full-time role. Anyways, the one defenseman here that you don't see is Eric Brandstrom, who has been a huge, huge disappointment. I really have to say, I mean, just like Zaitsev, you know, Brandstrom is a D-minus player. <sighs> Three assists in 37 games. I mean, th th he's supposed to be an offensive defenseman. He hasn't scored a goal in about 100 games. He only has three assists. I came into the season saying if Brandstrom doesn't put up 30 points, you have to reevaluate his NHL career. He's not even going to get 10 points at this rate. Um, the one good thing I suppose you could say is maybe his defensive game has gotten better. But still, at this point, you just have to say, should we just give up on him? And maybe that's a question I pose to you guys. Is it time to just give up on Eric Branstrom? He's had his chances. I think he's now 24 years old. We can't really use youth as the excuse forever. He just hasn't really done anything. And maybe it's just time to just cut our loss and say, this guy's just not an NHL caliber player. And maybe we should just put him on the trade block and see what can we get. Can we get a third round pick for him? It might be better than nothing. But anyways, Branstrom has been probably this team's biggest disappointment and that's why I don't even have him in the top six. Um, to bring us to the goaltending, both Talbot and Forsberg are C players. I mean, they've played okay, but they're not great goaltenders, and they haven't really stolen any games. I mean, there's they've made some good saves here and there, but both of them are over 30 years old. I, I just don't see them as having that big of a future. And I think the Senators would just be better off uh, getting rid of Cam Talbot and bringing in Mad Sogard. So Mad Sogard is probably our best goaltending prospect. He's the number one guy in Belleville. Uh, big Danish goaltender. I think, you know, if you're in a rebuild, for me, you know, you get rid of Talbot at the end of the season, not now, but towards the trade deadline. You make Forsberg the number one guy, and you have Mad Sogard coming in as the backup and give him a few games. Let's see what he can do. 
So again, unfortunately, doesn't look the Senators doesn't look like the Senators are going to make the playoffs. But I would get rid of Broussard at the end of the season, not now. I would probably bring in Ridley Gray because I think he's a good prospect. It's time to see what he can do at the NHL. He's played well. Uh, I think 23 points in 25 AHL games. So I think Ridley Gray deserves a spot to at least see what he can do. And next season, uh, maybe play a full-time spot if he makes a team out of training camp. Uh, get rid of Nikita Zaitsev and bring in Lassie Thompson. That's another move I would make, and I'd make that move right away. I'm not waiting to the deadline. I'm doing that like yesterday. That's a, that's a move that should have been done at the beginning of the season. Um, I'd also put Eric Brandstrom on the trade block just to see what I can get for him because he hasn't really done anything. And unfortunately, at this point, I don't think he has, has that much value anyways. And uh, at the end, again, trade deadline, Cam Talbot, I'm getting rid of. I'm putting him on the trade block, seeing whatever I can get for him, and I bring in Matt Silgard. So those are my three suggestions, but it's not going to make this team a playoff contender. So we might have to wait till next season. But so far for, I guess, the first half of the season, well, you know, you just have to give this team a bit of a C plus. Not good enough to make the playoffs. But I will give one thing. They can be exciting to watch. And we do have some really exciting players. You know, Kachuk and Stusa especially are the really exciting players. That I, I really love watching. Kind of worth the price of admission, just the two of them. So... That's the first half of the season, and I will see you once the season is finished and give you my opinion on the entire season. Thanks for watching.